June 9th, 2023. I wish it was 2019. Was, well, you said 2013. Right? <laughs> well, I, I just, I just turned 41 so I could shave a couple of years off. Yep. Yep. Um, Happy birthday. That's what it, it's been a, a tough 48 hours. Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, I did the, um, I did the opposite. Of, yeah. Two days ago. Yeah. Happy belated, man. Thank you so much. Hmm. But I went against all podcasting rules this which, morning, which was into last night, which was get a good night's rest yep. and eat breakfast. That's right. That, that, those two so, are the rules that we always talked about. So, um, yep. I never thought at 41, I'd be complaining about my, um, <laughs> what pod, changes my, after my boy. podcast stamina and, <laughs> and having a balanced diet and a, and a good night's rest going into it. So God bless people that do this around the clock. Cause fuck yo, you, it's, it's hard. You it's need, tough. You need everything in you, but I guess that doesn't, matter when you're 28 you know what man yeah. you'd be surprised because yeah. <laughs> last night i got yeah. one of two things i did not get a good night's rest but i ate this morning so a oh, good okay yeah. it's tough man because like starbucks yeah starbucks yeah it's what quick. do you have egg white bites Ooh. oatmeal and that's it and that's oh, avocado spread that's a, oh you had the that's full a, that's full, a big meal full full spread to, yeah i have to bro um <laughs> My mood just, uh, I have man, a thyroid yeah. thing, so uh, if I don't eat, yep. my mood just I goes, can't think straight, man. I know. Yeah, if I don't I eat. Yeah. So. All right, we got to backtrack. The 28-year-old gentleman we're talking about right now <laughs> for episode 12 of Standard Issues Behind the Seams is none other than actor extraordinaire, Brandon Lara Quenta. Got it. I said it right. You got it. Lara Quenta or Lara Quenta? Whatever you want to say. Because uh, he's questioning himself if right I'm, now. If I'm talking to Devin, it's Lara Quenta. <laughs> Lara Quenta. Thank you so much, Brandon. For Thank you for coming, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, 28, you can just roll out of bed, cruise over here. <laughs> and he's got an Air One, so you know he's feeling good. <laughs> for, he had a $40 green drink. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's interesting, uh, you know, 12 episodes in, all of the guests um, have come into our lives through different points. One guest was actually the gentleman that connected Jared and I. Um, oh, wow. Another guest was the lady that has to wake up to me every morning. Mm. Another one is um, a DJ friend of ours. Yep. We've had people that um, work in the music industry, fashion, food, food, a little bit of everything. So we are psyched because... You're the first person to join us from the world of entertainment. I wouldn't even say oh, entertainment. I'd say TV. theater. No, theater. Yeah, no, theater. Yeah, theater. Yeah. Theater yeah. Is yeah. The most, yeah. There you go. Is the, you know, the highest of um, regards into acting, acting and stuff. So, yes. I feel like it's like for most people, it's like the foundation of like where they started. Right. Right. Uh, it was for mine. Mm. Um, started doing theater as a kid just for fun. And then as I got older, um, you know, my mom was like, you know, just sending me out for auditions and stuff. And I just enjoyed it. Plays in school and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah, All yeah. Right. plays so. in schools. It started out with that. And then um, did an off-Broadway play in New York. Uh, and then moved to Florida. Did a bunch of commercials there. Just to build a resume and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, theater. I just, I don't know. I, I want to go back to theater because I just feel like, I don't know. It's it's just, it's a different camaraderie. Mm -hmm. you know, you're with people for like <clears throat> a couple weeks in a row and you get really, really close super quick. Right. Um. But yeah, and theater's just a foundation for most actors. It was for me. So I miss it. Going yeah. back to all the way to elementary school. That young? Middle school? I think middle school, yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah, as a kid, I was super into sports. I played baseball most of my life. And that was like what I wanted to do, or so I thought. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, acting kind of just really fell in my lap. Baseball. Baseball. New York. New York. <laughs> Die hard. Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Bronx. Yeah, man. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll talk it's about the uh, New York all over it. We'll talk about the 2009 World Series at a later date. <laughs> we'll get to that, but I forgot about that. A Rod didn't. Uh, so it's like the one year he should. Great player. It's been, I feel like as a Yankee fan, like the one year where he like showed up in the playoffs, and I was super happy about it. And then a month later, all of the steroid info came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So it was all perform enhanced performance enhancing. World Series results. That was that year. That was that yeah. year. Yeah. It was literally I, like I right remember. after. It was like I win the World Series, bong bong. And then he's out the league basically, right? They like pretty much forced Kinda. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way. Man. It's weird, man. Because like, while, while I agree, like, you know, I don't agree with like taking steroids and stuff to help you boost your performance, but hitting a baseball is super hard. Hardest, that's that probably the hardest. You know what I mean? It's very hard. What's the percentage? 
Like if you if you're like good, what's the percentage? If you're batting two fifty, you're making hundreds of millions. Of dollars, <laughs> yes, you know. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, you're, if Point, you're batting three hundred, uh, you're all fame. Yeah. Point two five zero. Point two five. That, that's your. That's a percentage of success <laughs> swinging a bat at a ball that's coming at you that looks like it's like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, yep. And land in this zone. It doesn't go that way. That right. way, straight to somebody to catch it can throw you out, or you can even make contact. Yep. That's You've got like milliseconds to the side yeah. too. Mm. So how long do you play uh, baseball for? Uh, I think I started ba- playing baseball when I was four years old. Okay. Um, played all the way up until high school. Uh, didn't have the commitment that I think I needed to kind of go further. I was just a young kid, bro. I was a chicken head, yeah. you know, <laughs> concerned with the wrong shit. Like, you know, going out and yeah, aren't ooh, we all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Things you do as a kid, like you, you're so concerned with other people's opinion of you mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I was so distracted, but now at 28, I feel like if I had the dedication that I have now, who knows? Yeah. You know, but I, I want to believe that like where I ended up in life is happened, where you're meant happened. to be. That's, That's cool. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, so middle school, We'll talk, yeah. Middle school, the ball starts coming in fast. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's the real step from like little league to you know, high school. And then yeah, like, yeah. Dude, these kids are, they're yeah, growing from high school. Pictures. It's just like just one moment oh, away yeah. from like, yeah, yeah man. It, cause it cause remember in high school, you're freshmen, right? But you got people who are seniors, seniors. who are yeah. getting ready for college who are throwing Eighties to nineties, yeah, 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 yeah. So when I went to high school, it was like a wake up call because I thought I was, I thought I was. <laughs> You're like, I'm good. Shit, in, in middle league, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh great. And then high school it was just a different type of commitment, right? You know? Right. And at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life. I didn't know where, you know, what school. I wasn't concerned <clears throat> yeah. with that. I was living in the, for, for for the present moment. Yeah. So, in Florida. In Florida. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. We had just moved uh, from Florida or from New York to Florida. Um, big high school sports state, Florida. Big time, dude. The high school that I went to. Uh, it's huge on basketball, baseball, soccer. They recruit. I probably shouldn't say that. They <laughs> kids go to the high yeah, school they to, recruit. you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And a, a bunch of people actually got, uh, got drafted to the uh, NBA from my high school. Oh, no way. Ben, damn. ben Simmons. Oh, no way. Damn. Uh, D'Angelo Russell. Yep. And then a couple other people, damn. but those are like the two most prominent mm. names. There's, there's like a, th- I think it's like a two or three block radius in Miami that has, like yielded the highest number of NFL mm-hmm. players, like in like a per block capita or whatever. It's yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, and it was like an absurd number. Like Miami's yeah. that place, man. Yeah. Florida's mm-hmm. that place because you can play all year round. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I there's see. no winter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, right, right. Hey, California, big high school. Yeah. Sports yeah. State, yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Um, I would like grew up wrestling and like a lot of the, schools out here we would go to like reno for a huge tournament and there was a ton of california schools in it. yeah you yeah. wrestled uh, yeah florida too yep. no yeah way. yep my dad wrestled in high school oh no uh, way yeah. nice nice it was it was a tough sport when i see one and for like the four years me going in and the four years after my high school was like nationally ranked and i came into a class of all seniors that were insane mm. and then the class behind me by the time they came in i'm a junior sophomore junior but there's a freshman that are coming in and already ranked in the state. So it was like, wow. I was in such a rock yeah, and yeah. hard it's, place. It's like, but tough. it was, you know, wrestling was one thing was I was torn between wrestling and skating in high school, mm. but all of the hard, like just the work ethic and discipline that I realized now I got from, from wrestling from mm. that, you know, yeah. it was like the last of the sports that I was like, yeah, I was a hundred pounds soaking wet going into my freshman year. It's like the only me too, man. sport left for me to <laughs> try to, participate in so i had to do wrestling because i couldn't get on the basketball team <laughs> yeah a lot of kids yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely like, like i don't uh, know what else to do okay i go running you know, the wrestling. wrestling team is like the mutants at table nine you know like it's like that you yeah, know? yeah and it's all walks of life it's you know <clears throat> but that's why it makes sense because you have the weight classes and yeah. you have mm-hmm. different kids that can fill it yes fill yeah, the holes yeah. up. but it's wrestling. tough man i know kids that you know God rest their soul passed away from how difficult of and demanding of a sport mm. it is. Mm. And, and uh, you know, like any other sport, the parents ask a lot and stuff. So yeah, man, those but, people who didn't get to live out their dreams themselves, they put a lot of pressure <laughs> yeah. on their kids. Yeah. I see it now though. I got to back off on the sidelines of my daughter. <laughs> yeah. I totally get it. You know, mm. it's it's she'll be in the game to. like dad, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she won't say that, but she'll be like, stop. And I'm like, mm-hmm. stop. You can just get out there and score. <laughs> so, but no, yeah, it's hard not to. Cause like you, you want to coach them, but at the same time, like you want to be dad. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
It's a fine line to walk. I, I assume I'm not a parent yet, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure one day I'll be calling you saying, give me some advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll say, follow your gut, man. Uh, <laughs> same way our parents did. So, but so, you, so as we were talking about parents, so your, your mom and dad, they, they help get you transition, not transitioning, but get you into um, acting. My parents are yeah. super supportive, yeah. man. Um, I'm really, really blessed. They come from an entertainment space? No, man, the crazy, the opposite, man. That my, my parents both were NYPD. No way, damn. Yeah, mom and dad. Um, my dad makes this joke all the time. He thinks he's funny. Uh, <laughs> Probably is funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just tries not to be. Um, he's like, you know, I'm kind of an actor myself. And I'm like, oh, what makes you say that? He's like, well, because my dad did undercover work. Oh, damn. Uh, he's like, that's like the most real oh, acting you'll ever do. Right. So he has a point. <laughs> it's, um, it's real acting. Yeah, it's real acting, man. As a kid, do you, uh, you're a little young, but did he watch the show New York Undercover? I'm oh, sure yeah. he did, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah he watched. That's a great show, yeah. New York Undercover, yeah. NYPD Blue, yeah, yeah. all those shows, uh -huh, man. Yeah. yeah. And he New York Undercover was sick, though. It had all the rappers. It had all, mm. like. So all, that was like a was, reality type. No, that was a. That was a it was a scripted show. Oh, scripted. Yeah, okay. but they were like they did a good job of, of like curating the right. Like, yeah, you know, like culture, like hip hop right. and and just New York culture at mm. that time period, and and the, like they really did a good job of like incorporating into the mm. storyline. So that's what I grew up on, man. Yeah. Hip hop back in the day. Like yeah. now, my taste in music has expanded, but it was all about like Fat Joe, yep. Fifty Cent, yep. Ja Rule. Like that's uh -huh. what I grew up on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I went to school in the Bronx, so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just all yeah, I was around. Fat Joe, <laughs> big yeah. pun. Yeah. Uh, Damn. That Joe's son actually went to our school. No way. Damn. Yeah. I think he was like a grade younger than me. Uh, yeah. He seems like a great father, Fat Joe. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, just from just what I see online. Oh my. Uh, damn. So uh, parents, both law enforcement. Law enforcement. Mom's, mom's a police woman. Gotcha. Dad. Uh, just start, like a beat cop. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 And then uh, my mom got hurt. She like fell off of a, a bicycle and she got kind of put indoors for a while. My dad, he started out as a patrol. Yeah. Um, I think he went to narcotics doing undercovers and stuff. And then from there, some stuff happened and he went to homicide Damn. and became a detective. Damn. I mean, that's a, I mean, being an undercover cop is like, you're literally putting yourself in like the line of fire yeah, in man. like the underworld. <laughs> like, yeah, that's pretty that's fucking crazy. sketchy. That's sketchy. Wake up and yeah, man. That's like, movie like stuff. this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. They based off of movies. Um, of, and as a kid, you don't, you can't conceptualize like the severity of like what your parents going through. Right. Right. I just like, I'm like in my head, I'm like, my dad's just fighting crime. He's fighting the yeah, bad guys. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it was so much more than that as, a, as an adult. And with the show that I'm working on now, where I play a cop, I realized the magnitude of what they were doing mm. just as hard as a kid to, you know, comprehend and did he have to yeah. keep did you guys have to keep where you guys lived at pretty I private think, or well i kept think when or, he, to i mean, my, to I my, mean my, this is pre-social media and shit so no no sure like, yeah um um my dad stays off of facebook mm -hmm. he doesn't do social media for his own reasons but when he was in homo uh, sorry when he was in undercover work uh narcotics mm -hmm. i think he was like <clears throat> single at the time or oh, okay. So it was easier for him to kind of just like, he didn't have any, any really responsibilities. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then when he started to have a family, my siblings, myself and stuff, that's when he kind of transitioned over to like homicide work. Damn. Yeah. That's a trip. Yeah. I but know, detective, man. not like, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's slightly like after, after this, after, after shit, what happens. Yeah. Right, right, after right, shit's, right. You know, happened, they come in and yeah. assess the scene and right, right, right. Yeah. But if we're ever in New York and we get jammed up, we know who we're calling. Right there, um, it's it's a crazy how many just people my dad knows in New York. That's are it. they still in New York? No, my parents are in Florida. Oh, okay, they went back. They did the thing where it's like, you're tired, get your ass to Florida. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's my, like such an East Coast. Thing. My mom's been been debating it for years. Oh, so, and I'm <laughs> to like, Florida? Yeah, yeah, on the Gulf Coast too. Ah, uh, people get, do it for the weather, man. Yeah, you get a pool with a net around it because the bugs are so bad. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's one floor, so you have no stairs. It's like, yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, where in Florida? Uh, where I she think looking? maybe like, I think she's looking like the Pensacola area or oh, okay. something. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sounds pretty methy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. We've driven through that area before. Uh, we did a cross country <clears throat> trip a couple of years ago during the pandemic. And we drove to like the, the Pensacola and we were just like, let's just keep on driving. <laughs> course, we don't need yeah. to stop here. Dude, Florida's a big ass state. It is, yeah. It's like it damn near probably if you drive from Miami to Georgia, that's probably like a good 10 to 15 hour drive. Oh, okay. It's like big as fuck. Yeah, yeah, For yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I've been I've been to Florida once for uh, I think Orlando. Yeah, is that where uh, Disney and Nickelodeon mm-hmm. is? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been there once with That's Taylor. Fun. <laughs> I like Disney. Right. It was pretty cool. But enough about what we like. Yep, yep, yep. So Florida. All right. So middle school, New York, yeah. theater. You you mentioned off Broadway. Yeah. You caught, you got that gig when you were in Florida or still in still, New York? Still in New York. Okay, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I forgot how I went out for it, but uh, I did that for, did that for like a season. And then uh, parents retired like right after 9-11. So we moved out when I was 10. You're acting in high school too? Yeah. Okay. But high school wasn't until Florida. Okay. I look, you talk, all right. You tell me this part and then I'll go yeah. question for high school. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Uh, so when I moved to Florida, I was around like 13. No, I was sorry. I was 10. Um, went to middle school there. Was homeschooled for a while too. Cause acting kind of became like. Uh, got it. Your got main really, thing. Yeah. For, for a bit. It's funny. I always say like I fell into acting and it wasn't my first like, you know, love or passion because it wasn't. I, I fought it tooth and nail because you know, the, the minute you're a part of like the thespian society, kids start calling you names. Making That's what I was going to ask you was like, yeah. what's that, what that was like being in high school, you know, going through that. And it was, um, it was a, it was a period of my life. You know, how they say like, Oh, high school is like one of the best years of your life. Yeah. It was not yeah. for me. Oh, right. Um, I don't know if it was for you guys, but it was the opposite. You know, I was picked on a lot, not physically, but just like verbally and yeah. shit. And so th- it, there was actually a point where I was doing commercial work. That was like, what I was getting booked for a lot. And a girl from my high school was like, I saw you on a commercial last night. And I was like, kick no, the doors open. Huh? No, no, no. Oh no, you're, yeah. oh, you were. Yeah. I was damn. like, no, 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 no. You didn't that wasn't that. me. No, yeah. it wasn't me. <laughs> and I was like fighting a tooth and nail because of what other kids yeah, were, yeah. were thinking. And yeah. Right. Uh, and it wasn't until like after high school that I, of course, like, you know, your self-discovery happens. And you're like, yeah. I don't give a damn what these people yeah, think yeah, about right. me. Yep. But going back to like the beginning of it, I didn't appreciate the craft and like what actors did for a living. Right. Until I booked a show called bloodline, which is like one of the first Netflix dramas Mm -hmm. ever like stream on Netflix. And I worked with some pretty like prolific actors. How old at this point? Maybe 13. All right. So Mm -hmm. young, maybe 14, 15 around there. Yeah. Young. And uh, I spent like four seasons on that show. And by watching everybody, take what they do very seriously. I started to develop a respect. That's uh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. And that's just grown and grown and grown. And You're sh- where did that shoot at? The keys, man. The Florida keys. Oh, get out of here. Damn. Yeah. So there was well, a lot of, a lot of production going on in, in Florida at the time, at that time. because that's they had cool. a good tax incentive. All right. So I actually booked that job, man. It happened so quick of my mom's, a friend of, of my mom's, uh, she saw on Facebook that they were doing like open, castings for uh-huh. a role in some show that wasn't even titled yet. Friend of your mom's. Friend of my mom's. Correct. And she's like, hey, Cookie. Uh, cookie, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, hey, Cookie. cookie. Uh, <laughs> That's such an East Coast name. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's like, hey, Cookie, I think Brandon would be great for this. She sent me out for it. I put myself on tape. I think the next day they were like, hey, you booked it. You got to be in the Florida Keys tomorrow. Damn. So, Damn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so once again, I had no idea who was a part of it, what it was called. There, there was nothing attached to it. Uh, my dad and I took the six hour drive down to the Florida Keys mm. uh, and I get there and my dad's freaking out because he sees like actors like Sam Shepard and Sissy Spacek and Kyle Chandler and Ben Mendelsohn and these really, really big actors. At the time I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until like I looked them up and I started to work with them that years later, I'm like, holy shit, these were big people. Yeah. And I probably should have enjoyed that time a bit more, but I was a kid. You know, yeah. Not, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, of course I just wanted to get back to high school. Yeah. Baseball. Foresight 13. Yeah. 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 So, um, that really opened up a lot of doors for me, man. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I think back middle school, high school <clears throat> kids, kids suck at mm. that age. I, I was a skateboarder and that was skating was not cool then. Mm. Like, mm. you know, like if you wore skate gear, like they would, if I wore skate gear that looked like something like a champion or Tommy, they call it fake, mm. you know, like, They'd look at your tag. You know, <laughs> I remember. Cool tags. The, yep, the yep. big ones, like, you know, I was a little kid. So I was like, my mom would still get me like bigger boy sizes, boys, large boys, XL. And they'd be mm-hmm. like, damn, you don't have. And, and because you had the boy size, it looked like your parents didn't want to spread. Right, change. right, right. So you look like a broke boy. It's like, damn, yo, this damn, is man. like <laughs> kids minimize one another. Yo, that's. And it's uh, worse nowadays, know, man, with yeah, social media. I, oh, mm-hmm. um, there's a school here and I'm not going to mention the school, um, but there's a school here in LA where like the kids are in middle school and they're all concerned with like 
what's the designer you have on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, Because right. you know, a lot of people's kids who go there, they're like athletes and yeah. it's crazy, man. It's like, That's you're a kid. Crazy. You shouldn't be concerned about that stuff. We yeah. had to have like, well, our era. Yeah. Tommy, Nautica, Ralph yep. Lauren, yeah. <laughs> Paul, you know, these kids grow up with Gucci, LV. Oh yeah. Romaine, it's so different. Like, yeah, I'm not, you know, that was like so like out of our realm when the, we were growing up. But if you buy that shit, if I buy that shit, we keep this shit in our closet. Like, <laughs> maybe, maybe pull it Use out it for special occasions. Yeah, right. like, keep it in like you know, a dustproof you know, box. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. And these kids are like just dog in a drip. I know, man. <laughs> like, that's well, funny, man. That, that's crazy. Dude. I got made fun of in high school because my mom was a big rule follower back in the day, back in school. So the handbook at the high school I went to, it was a like college preparatory school. So there's uniforms. <clears throat> so it said, you got to wear either white or black sneakers. So my mom was like, okay, you can't wear white and black. You got to wear white or black sneakers. So she wanted these like ugly ass <laughs> Reebok, just straight all black, not a hint of white or anything other, other color. And the kids just would dog. <laughs> yeah. And that was your school shoe too, huh? School you shoe. couldn't play in it. No. Nah. Yeah, you couldn't go outside. Uh-uh. You gotta hell play no. in your school shoes. East Coast moms will bust your ass. Oh, really? Yeah, hell yeah. You get your school shoes and then your uh-huh. play shoes is probably your school your shoe PE shoes year. or something. Yeah. 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 That's so funny, dude. Yeah, yeah man. Funny, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It got better as like, you know, in college and stuff, but like high school and middle school were rough. I can't do solid color shoes, dude. Like if it's black, black, I can't. I, can't. I love, I, now that I'm older, I love a black oh, you, shoe because like, you can just. I can't do it. But yeah. but then back in, like if you wore a black shoe back then, they'd say you had like waiter shoes. <laughs> exactly. That's what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it looks like. What's wrong with a waiter? Not, yeah. not a <laughs> Damn, yo. <laughs> so, all right, not to throw you off. All right, you get, Maybe. bang, you get the good gig, the awesome gig down the Florida Keys. Mm-hmm. All right, <clears throat> um, I'm going to jump around a little bit. So. I had a skateboard project Mm -hmm. and, and the guy that led the skate program, he had a song said ice cream sneakers. I find my, I signed my first skater 20 years later. I'm still that song. When I hear it, nostalgia hits. Mm. So Drake has a song, I think with Nicki Minaj. And he says, you and all them white girls party of five. Mm -hmm. So you were on a show called party of five. (laughs) Damn, that was a smooth transition. That was good. So that was good. I'm doing my research and I'm uh-huh. like, damn, I wonder if Brandon feels about dropping like it's hot the same way he, when he hears this, this Drake and Nicki Minaj song. So I'm doing the research. Not the same fucking show at all. <laughs> I don't know if it's a remake. It's generation difference. It's a different generation. There's a white right? family here. Non-white. It's a- Same creators. Same creators though. Mm-hmm. So- and my, and my, my lady goes 28. How was he on party, party five? five. They, they, this came out in the early nineties. Yeah. I'm like, he was on it. Yo. <laughs> so, and then I'm doing my research and I was wrong. So, but then I'm, I'm, I'm lo- watching the party of five trailer that you're in. Mm. And that is a pretty heavy show. Yeah. Dealt um, with a pretty heavy topic. I yeah. think at the time, you know, immigration was like a huge thing. It mm-hmm. still is. But what I mean is like back then, like it was all over the media. Um, and this, so same creators, just different premise. Like back in the day, the old show, I think dealt, I never watched it, but the old show dealt with like this family of five or seven with the mom and dad who- the Were they all and, girls? No, I think- I think The original like a, one, was it all girls? I don't think so. So it was the Drake bars don't even, it was just coincidence? I that think it, it's uh, coincidence. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, oh, that was deep. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Not even the same thing. Uh, yeah. like, the, like the family died in a car accident. This one was about like the parents get deported to Mexico. Yeah. Oh. I played the eldest sibling, Emilio, who had to like, just kind of like become this father figure overnight. Mm. So mm. that was fun, but we only went a season. Oh, uh, no way. Yeah. It got canceled uh, for, I'm not sure the exact reason why, but it was around the pandemic time. So, gotcha. oh, okay. Yeah. When, yeah. when you're, you know, you always hear how difficult it is to get into character and to get out of character. Um, could you speak to what that, experience has been like for you over the years if there's ones that have been more that have been heavier if i don't know if that that one seems extremely heavy yeah to to to, you know to build yourself around and then when the show wraps what's that process like um it's it, it i'll tell you what the most difficult part is is you spend so much time with these people for x amount of months right and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, the show's wrapped. You're going on hiatus or the show's canceled. And you're like, when will I ever see these people again? Right. You know, they become family in a way. 
Uh, and then you just, you never see him again, you know, unless Facebook, you, unless you go to Facebook, the next scene, Facebook. <laughs> unless Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a good thing about social media is that you can kind of keep in touch and see what people are doing from afar. So you kind of feel like you're touching right base, you know, yeah. every now and then rap parties. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have them, you know, and you might run into somebody, you know, but I don't, I don't know, man. It's, it sounds weird to say, but at 28, like you think I'd be like going out a lot and stuff yeah. since I got married, I feel like it was the best thing to happen to me because I, I became such a homebody yeah. <laughs> yep. and I became so much more focused on where I wanted to be 10 years from now. Um, and just, yeah, I feel like my mind is a lot more aligned and like centered mm -hmm. compared to where I was at 21. Right. Where right, were you right, at yeah. 28? 28. It's only a couple of years ago. It's like 13, 14 years ago. Yeah. Right. What was I doing? Probably partying, drinking, doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> that's real that's real yeah. Yeah. yeah 28 where was i at? i had just i was doing business yeah. still doing business but i had just got out of skating and got a show in television mm -hmm. at 27 28 yeah, you're in television and too. it was you fucked up last time yeah because for me it was moving to los angeles first time really like like distancing myself from my family mm -hmm. i'm learning TV money can be real. I mean, production money can be real. And oh like, yeah. Yeah. That was like my first real taste of, of like adult bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's 20s. long hours, man. It's long like, you hours, know, bro. six, you got to be at set on set, 6 AM, mm -hmm. 5 AM, 4 AM some days. <clears throat> and then, you know, you're shooting, you're learning all the, I was just learning all the rules of everything sat yeah. and after and shit. So it's hard to have life outside um, of it when you're working mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Like you try to, you know, in your head, like, okay, after no, I go yeah, for work, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go and make some time for myself, go to the gym or something. And you get home, or if you have that long drive home, you're like, fuck, I just want to yeah. go and sleep. Yeah. It's tough. Like the show that I'm working on now or was working on to the, the writer strike happened. Um, it's, it's very physical, physically demanding. It's a cop show. So, um, I'm like, I got to get in the gym at least four times a week, yeah. at least four times a week. Right. But sometimes I get home and the hour from Long Beach to back home in you know, mm -hmm. LA is like an hour and a half. And I'm just like- Burnt know, out. Yeah, man. And then, you know, I have a wife to attend to, you know, dogs and family and stuff. So Does like, your wife act as well? My wife acts and she writes, yeah. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Damn. We actually did the show, right? You we, guys, were you guys in the show together or no? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. We actually, I told Jared, but we launched a production company, TV and film oh. production company. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. It's like, uh, we're still we building need production work. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's right. Make a note of this. Yeah. yeah. No, for real. Yeah. We, um, we want to get into the space of like, you know, um, shining light on like Latinos, you know, cause we're both yeah. Latin. So we want to create a, a, a space where they're highlighted and where they're put at the forefront mm -hmm. of, you know, TV and film. That's yeah. awesome. So we're That's right awesome. now in the beginning yep. stages of building the company from the ground up, but you know, it's exciting. Cause as an actor, you don't really have steady work. I've been fortunate for the past year. It's been nothing but steady, but that's not normal. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're waiting around for a year, two years. Mm. That's what I learned. That was the biggest eye opener to, to working in television. Cause when I took that job, we worked for six months, mm -hmm. like nonstop. And then you're just, then they're just like, you rap. And I'm like, so what happened when we rap? I just, I moved out here for this. And they're like, oh, well, we'll call you when we get the pickup for the second season. I'm like, so when do you think the call is going to come? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it could be a month, could be two months. Mm -hmm. And then luck, fortunately we had three seasons. And then like the third season was kind of two set, like Broken two up. halves, you know, mm -hmm. but that's a gnarly world, man. You're like, you're, you're literally hustling from job to job. Yeah, man. You know? yeah. Every department, mm -hmm. you know. It's tough too. It's like, I think the biggest learning lesson for me was like managing your money. Cause right. When you're, like you said, yeah, when you're yeah. making, when you have a, a job, you're like, okay, I have X amount of dollars that I'm expecting. Yeah. But what you're not expecting is not to work for a year. So how right. do you make that money last? Yeah. And, right. And it's tough. Cause you're in an industry where like everybody's trying to flaunt and, uh, you know, designer this and you know, whatever that, right. Drive right. Th this car. But like, you got to stay like, you got to have people who like keep you grounded. Mm. And once again, I feel like being married and like having like the, the support system that I have at home, my parents yeah. helps me do that. Has there, have you had droughts where the, <clears throat> the, maybe the gigs weren't coming or maybe not the ones that you wanted were mm -hmm. coming in? Yeah, man. And that, that's gotta be a, a difficult thing to manage, huh? Yeah. After party five got canceled, um, you know, that was my first series regular job. Mm. So I was like, this is great. Like, you know, just dinners left and right and stuff. Yeah. And when it got canceled, I was like, oh shit, you know, what do I, where's my next, 
my next right, right. paycheck coming from. Um, so they were, I went through a rough patch as we all did because the pandemic happened, but I was offered a few jobs that didn't align with what I wanted to do creatively at that time. Mm. And I had to pass on them, although they were, you know, a good chunk of change just because like, I was like, I'm not going to sell myself. That's why at least I felt for money. Mm. So I held out and it was rough, man. You know, I, right. I did side jobs, you know, for a while just to kind of get by, but you know, I stuck with it and long and behold, you know, more opportunities came, but it's tough. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you've, you've had very compromising roles presented to you, which you've had to respectfully decline that. Yeah. Job. Yeah. Just uh. things that like, didn't, I'm all about like, at least the, at, at this day and age fulfillment, right? Mm -hmm. What fulfills me? And I followed that. So ju just projects that like, didn't move me, didn't inspire, didn't, have a burning desire inside of me. Um, but you know, like I said, it was presented in front of me and it was like, Hey, like I know you're going through a rough time. This could really help. But I was like, my, actually my wife, cause I was considering it. My wife yeah. was like, honey, no, she's like, hold out. She's like, you're better. That's you're, awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. She's like, you know, I got you. My yeah. wife, man, she's, she's awesome, man. She's, 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 she's your awesome. entourage buddy was like, go take the job. Go. We need to hit the club next week. <laughs> but I, I, I think that's kind of why I, hit, I have keep my circle very small. Mm. And you know, like, like it's, I have maybe a handful of people that I can just call and like, you know, one of them being my wife, my mom and dad, mm. you know, yeah. because it's tough out here. Cause you, like you said, you got a bunch of yes men around you. Yeah. Right. Mm. And uh, you need those people to tell you, you know, yes. no, yeah. who actually are not thinking about themselves, who are thinking about you and what's better, best for you. For sure. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to look yourself in the mirror every day and be at peace with whatever it is you decide to do on a daily basis. And you have tough. to live with that. It was tough know? to look myself in the mirror for a uh, while. <laughs> I didn't like the person I was, you know, cause I felt like all my life I was trying to appease everybody else, mm -hmm. right? Be who they wanted me to be. And then there was a switch that happened out here. And it was after marriage that I was like, I'm, I'm going to be who I want to be, mm -hmm. not who everybody else wants me to be. And I've never been happier. I've never felt more just like, Glad it happened Similar early to you too. Yeah. <laughs> really early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you, so you're, you're acting in high school in Florida. Was the natural progression for you then <clears throat> to travel and be based in Los Angeles or based in New York? So it's funny how that happened. Um, came from New York, right? Mm. Uh, moved to Florida, booked a television series called 13 Reasons Why um, that filmed out here in like the Bay Area. Mm. So they were flying me out from Florida to LA for a while. And I was telling them that I was LA based, but I just happened to be in Florida for vacation. So they did that twice. And then the third time they were like, all right, when I flying you back from Florida again, like, either you live here or you don't. Yeah. So that kind of sped up the process of me moving to LA. Oh, but for okay. a while, I knew that that was, what, that, that was gonna happen because my dad and I came out every pilot season mm. uh, for like an X amount of months. So it was on the horizon, just happened sooner than expected. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so there's like seasons like this too in the entertainment world. There were pilot seasons. It's changing now because oh, of okay. streaming. But for a while, it was like from January to like April, like everybody would from different states come into California because that was when like the most auditions were. Oh, I see. Right. Because like network television was just like pumping out content. Yeah. But streaming, man, streaming really kind of just shook Ch up the, the whole world. Right, right. That's the whole reason why there's a strike right now because streamers are not, they're not compensating writers and get out of here. Yeah, man. You would think that'd be the natural thing to incorporate. Like if we're showing it here, you gotta get paid for it here. If we're showing it here, you should get paid for it here. Well, well, it, that's not in the contract. So every, yeah. I think every couple of years, I'm not sure exactly how many years they restructure the contract, their union writers have their own union. Actors have one directors. Yeah. So the writers one, the last time they did it was before streamers were kind of ever really a thing. And nobody yeah. knew how it was going to happen. Right. Right. So I've seen, screenshots of like writers getting residual checks from streamers for like cents, man. Damn. Mm. Crazy. And I'm sure the studios are like getting, you know, right. Tenfold. I get those 30 cent yeah. sag. I get them too, man. <laughs> you gotta cash you, them. Yeah. You yeah. save them yeah. or you do it all at once. I No, I save them. And then, uh, and yeah. then I'll, yeah, yeah, fuck one yeah, I might need that 30 cents. One <laughs> buy, buy you a coffee, hey, you bro. Only 30 fun. cents, bro. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I might need it. So what was I about to say? Um, do a 13 reasons why. 13 reasons why they're shooting a show in LA that's based in the Bay. Mm -hmm. So you end up making the move. Does your, does your old man move out here with you? No, actually, uh, my wife at the time, who was my girlfriend, moved out. We had just started. You dating. guys meet on set? No, no, no. We we met in Florida. So set, what do they call it? A set? Uh, there's a there's a term for it. There's a term for it. I just heard it the other day. <laughs> I don't. Oh. Know. Um, damn. damn. One of the, my street league judges. His his girl is a pretty big actress. Uh, God, what does she call it? 
like a set romance or something. I was like, that's a pretty good term. I, huh. I, oh, okay. I, we'll have to look they have, up, that so. happens a lot, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. A lot of people, <clears throat> they, they hook up. They shit where they eat, <laughs> as they say. Man, you can't do that. No, I met my wife prior to ever like kind of moving out here. Yeah, I knew her from, mm. from the jump. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we met at 17 years old. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. What, where is she from originally? Florida. All right. And I never another, let her forget it. Another Floridian. <laughs> <laughs> another Floridian. No, it's Florida. There's good people from Florida. Yeah. As is. Right here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm from New York. Uh, your okay. wife. <laughs> yeah. And my wife. There you go. So, Bong, you come out here immediately. Does work jump off for you once, once you come out here for pilot season? I have been coming out here for a couple of years and then, you know, nothing, you know, testing, you know, for a couple of shows and stuff, but didn't really land anything. First big thing I land was 13 reasons why that show uh, was based off of a book by this author named Jay Asher. And it already had a huge following, but I think what really helped the show was Selena Gomez was behind, you know, she was producing the film with her mom, Mandy Tifi, and that brought another audience in itself oh. and the amount of attention overnight. I kid you not overnight when the show premiered, I think like my follower count went from like 20,000, maybe what year was this? God, I can't remember. I really 2015 maybe ish. Sounds about right. Yeah. To like half a million. Selena Gomez was already producing films at that television show. I think at so. That point. Damn, I think yeah. so. I think her and her mom have a production company, TV and film production company. Um, so Man, this was like overnight. their overnight overnight. I kid you not. It's crazy. <laughs> and it changed things. Cause like I wasn't used to now we were going places and it was like, you know, the young kids, they, with the phones, they just, Oh my yeah. God, you're, you know, can I get a selfie? And I was just not used to it. Yeah. So it was tough navigating that, that spotlight and attention for a while. Cause it's, you know, yeah. from not having it to that, but I tell you what, that show opened up a lot of doors for me That's awesome. as an actor. You know, great, a lot of great opportunities that I got to be in the room because of the body of work, you know, from working on a show with such prolific people, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So from there, you pick up a skateboard <laughs> and you land a spot on one of the biggest shows of me and Jared's probably high school years. Which is? Pamela Anderson. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. They watch. Yeah, man. Yeah. We shot that in Florida, actually. No. <laughs> yeah, man. Florida look, it seems Florida, like the appropriate just, yeah, setting for Baywatch. <laughs> I tell you, man. It was, it was fun. I got to work for like a day or two on This that. is a new generation of Baywatch. So it's clearly not the Baywatch. Yeah, the right. one we watch. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. With David Hasselhoff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's running. Yeah. I, I remember uh -huh. that. This okay. is the one with uh, Zac Efron and The Rock and- Oh, no Oh, it's idea. the movie that's, one. It's the movie. It's a movie, damn. Yeah. Oh, okay, sick. I'm gonna watch it again because I, I think I've seen that twice If already. you blink, you'll miss me. So here's oh, really? the thing. Okay. You're talking to two of probably- Some geezers over yeah, here. Yeah, we're dude. so not film or television buffs. We know sports and he knows jujitsu. Yeah, that's it. I don't uh, know anything else. <laughs> so. That's it, man. Yeah. <laughs> but so when I was going what? through this, we were, we were looking through your your- this filmography uh, mm -hmm. and my girl was like, Oh, I know that. I know that. I know that. Uh, it was yeah, cool. Man. I've been really fortunate. You know, uh, God has blessed me to the point where like I've worked with a lot of great people and I've, you know, haven't always like, uh, what's it called? Honed in like on the opportunity. But I feel like as I get older, like I'm starting to like not squander the opportunities, you know, less and less. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. I, I know that what I'm doing right now, there's only a small percentage of people who actually get to do it. And I, I, I recognize that and I try to take it in with as much gratitude as I can. Awesome. Yeah. Tomorrow it could be gone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Is there any, you know, I, I'm sure Jared, I have got a couple people that are like <coughs> those figures in my, in my life and things I've been able to do that. If, if it wasn't for them, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have been able to land in these spots. Are do you have those, those figures, whether they're, I don't know, other actors or acting coaches or agents that were super influ influential in your trajectory and your Definitely, career. Man. Um, I, I, I'm a firm believer that nobody gets anywhere in this world alone. Right. Mm -hmm. Despite what some people we may want to believe self-made, but it, it, in reality, like somebody had to have believed in you, right. Oh, for sure. Giving you a shot. And there was a time it was, it was in my youth um, where a lot of people saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And it was mom, it was dad, you know, um, it was other acting coaches. It was casting, uh, casting directors, uh, teachers. Uh, I had this one specific teacher in high school. His name was Adrian Ahern or Ahern. And, uh, 
he cast me as the lead role as Danny Zuko in Greece. And that was during a period in high school, my freshman year where I was like, it was just a bad year for me, yeah. really, really bad. And he gave me, by giving me that role, he gave me this newfound confidence that I didn't even know I had. Right. And I, I don't want to say I owe everything because it's a whole conglomeration of people who have helped me, but like I, what stands out the most as far that as- That like, sticks in your head. For sure, man. Yeah. yeah. That's he awesome. saw something in me. Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. see myself. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's cool. What's his name again? Adrian Ahern, I think. Yeah, Shouts Adrian. to Adrian Ahern. I haven't spoken to him in uh, years, man. <laughs> you should reach out to him. I would love to. Yeah. Know, probably on Facebook. I'm sure he is on Facebook. Uh, I'm not on Facebook though. Right. So that's, yeah. I'll look and see when we wrap. <laughs> send a message Please. to me. But yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's it, those people in your lives, man, they never forget about them, man. You need them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because when you don't have the strength to keep on going, it sounds so cliche, but it's, it's true. Yeah. They're the ones who are like, you know, gives you the extra push to go a bit further and a, a bit further. It could be gold is on the other side of that thing. You've heard the thing about yeah. the, the miner and stuff, right. Who was just like feet from gold and gave up. Oh yeah. 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 Same yeah. thing, man. Yeah. We're yeah. all, we're all feet from something that we yeah. want. It just takes maybe a little extra push that maybe we can't give ourselves. And I'm sure Adrian probably reflects and looks back and is hella proud of you. And that's, that's an extremely important component of it. Cause it's like, yeah, people can wage their bets on you, mm -hmm. but it's still <clears> like you, if things can go left and you can make that support look like mm -hmm. unappreciated or that they were wrong, but that's a, that's a good thing. That to me, that's an awesome thing to make people look good for giving you that effort and that energy and consideration. Cause they could not say anything. Yeah, for sure. Which know, most people like, do. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Um, I've, you know, I don't know, as of late, there's been a handful of kids that like, I've tried to put in positions and it's backfired on me, but I'm not going to stop believing in people. For you, you know what I'm saying? Even a lot of these kids, man, it's like, it's, it's always worth a, a follow-up conversation, man. You know, it's always worth, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I don't know. Cause <sighs> you don't always get it. You don't always see it as a kid, you mm -hmm. know, and we, the world that we live in as, like you said, with social media and stuff, it's tough, man. It's a lot of pressure and you know, you, we have the, the, for whatever reason, we can make up scenarios, how things are supposed to play right. out. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. You know, if they don't always play out that way, then, you know, you're just yeah. like, oh my God. You know, yeah. so. It's hard not to be influenced by like the things you see, right. On yeah. the news, on social media. And I find that when I isolate myself from that, like when I take a trip with my wife to like a forest and just like, just disconnect. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. You almost need it nowadays. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you need to, it's not enough just being in, in your home, like in your hub. Yeah. You got to like get away, physically get away. Yeah. 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 Do you get back to New York a lot? I, I've not as much as I would want to, um, but I've been to New York quite a number of times uh, for work. Oh, that's awesome. Somehow it that's, keeps on yeah, calling me back really out cool, there. Man. Yeah. So I'll be yeah. out there for like five, seven, maybe 10 days. That's cool. And it's like the perfect amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit of work, relax a little bit. Yeah. Enjoy the city. And then you've been shooting back. up in Vancouver a lot lately. Yeah. Last, last I, year or so. I was there for nine months um, because I was working on a show called the good doctor there. And uh, Vancouver was fun. It was nice. It was, it was I've, ne I've never been before. It feels, I've always heard that it feels like a little bit of New York. It feels like a little bit of Frisco. Mm -hmm. I've, I've like, never been to Frisco, I, but I, yeah. Yeah. You know, just like it, it, you know, it being like this city built on the water. Yes. So, but yeah, I've That's always exactly heard amazing it. things about, I know amazing people from Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. So people, people are nice yeah. and the air smells really clean because it, it just doesn't stop raining. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh uh, man. So like we got there in the summer, we drove uh, in our car to Vancouver. We're there all of July. Beautiful, beautiful. And then I think like August or maybe October hit and it just, the sky is just closed up yeah. and oh. for like months just, I didn't see sun. Oh wow! It's, what it's like, like it's like, it's like this past. right now. I know. It's like yeah, like the last month we're all crawling it's out. All, of yeah, it's like it's so yeah, gloomy. Uh, yeah, we get spoiled here. I like yeah, we're, yeah, we're so used yeah, to the sun. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Vancouver was fun. Yeah, the, the show that I worked on there, it was great people, man. Has it come out yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's okay. streaming on. Uh, I think right now it's on Hulu. Hulu. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. But uh, so you were um, want to tell the audience what the show is? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the show centers around this doctor with I believe he has autism and savant syndrome. Uh, named uh, Sean Murphy, played by Freddie Highmore, who's a wonderful, wonderfully talented actor. Um, and it's been going on for like six seasons now. Yeah. But the show has heart. You know, it's a, it's a great family show. And I got to be on there for a season. And uh, 
you know, made, made some really cool friends, man, did some incredible work with some really cool people. The writers are incredible. Mm -hmm. So once again, like each project has been a stepping stone for something, you know? Yeah. How long were you staying up there at a time for while you were shooting? I moved there. Oh, get out of here. Dude. I was there for, yeah, for sublease the crib here. I tried to, All right. I tried to, but yeah. just, it's I'm, all, yeah, you don't want I'm not, your space I'm not like comfortable with people sleeping in my bed, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But so, double rents or mortgage. It was tough. Fuck, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. But it's funny. My wife was like, you know, if you go back for a second season, like she's like, I love you, but like, you're going to go on your own. Yeah. yeah I'm staying down yeah, here. Yeah. 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 Damn. We had a conversation one night. Cause I'm like, honey, you know, if we go back for a second season, I don't want to pay two rents and our lease was up. So I was like, you know, I might just give up the apartment and my wife, she cried. She's like, you can't do that. to me. Yeah. Cause she has a life here too. You know, yeah. she has friends and stuff. So I yeah. understood, but, um, actually I'm not coming back on the show. Um, actually you never know, but as far as like, you know, a, a more recurring character, I'm, I'm not, cause I, I'm actually working on something else now. Um, so have you ever been on a show that you were really, really emotionally invested in and, and your character got eliminated? This one. This one. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. That's, that has to fucking suck. Yeah. Cause the, cause the. Do you storm into the producer's room and kick the door? <laughs> no. Why am I out of here? <laughs> in my in my daydreams, I do. But uh, no, nah, man. They um, the writers and the and, and the creators. I mean, I love them dearly. Yeah. You know, they're really nice people, and you know, they just sometimes you run out of storyline. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but the topic, I'm really fortunate because every single project that I do, it has to deal with 13 reasons why I had to deal with suicide. Right. Um, this project with uh, the good doctor, my character was a recovering addict, um, you know, and he kind of turned his life around and became this doctor. But along the way, he kind of, you know, took, took three, three steps back. He, he kind of fell back into addiction. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've been fortunate to, to play around with these multifaceted, really layered characters mm -hmm. in every project that I do. It's not just like, Oh, you're the jock. You know, you've, I've done that before. Now in my life, I'm looking for things that kind of, you know, feel real in a right, sense. Right, right. Are you, um, when you're playing that role prior to, are you, are you working with like AA or NA sponsors or, or people that are, um, survivors or, mm -hmm. or recovering? Or recovering? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have friends who, 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 who were able to offer some great advice. Uh, at the same time, I've had some family members close to, to me who went through the same thing. So I picked their brains mm -hmm. at the same time. They also had resources on set that I could just go to, uh, and ask them, you know, their experience. And they were yeah. very, very open and willing to share with yeah. us, you know, their mm -hmm. experience, which helped. Yeah. yeah. You know? mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's yeah. heavy. Yeah. That's a heavy one, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so after that, now you have a new show that you're working on, which yeah. you mentioned earlier. It was a, yeah. You're a detective, not a detective. You're a, a beat cop, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. In Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Um, I yeah. play, uh, officer Alex Diaz on this new series that hasn't come out yet called, uh, on call. Mm -hmm. It's a new Dick Wolf series. Uh, it's going to be streaming on Amazon soon. Uh, so that's a cool name. Alex Diaz. It's got a ring yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah. It's been fun, man. That's cool. <laughs> And time. that's shooting the whole time in Long Beach. It has been until, yeah. until the writer's strike happened. Right. We were, uh, we were put on hold for a while until that gets resolved. Gotcha. Yeah. All production. All production. Yeah. How many episodes are going to be? Eight? There's going to be eight episodes, mm -hmm. um, but they're only half hour. And how many did you guys shoot so far? Two and three fourths. Okay. So yeah. just barely into it. Barely anything, man. Damn. All that time and that's it mm -hmm. jeez isn't that crazy yeah that's a lot once dude. the strike's over it'll load production will load back up correct but it takes a while you know because yeah. because it's not it's not like you just hop back yeah, like you yeah. get a, a lot of moving pieces you yeah. know pre-production and that type of stuff so <clears throat> gotcha so yeah. when was the original show so when was it supposed to air uh that's all speculation oh I'm i really, see i'm I see. really not sure got it got yeah. it yeah oh so yeah. they don't really have that you they, they film and then they figure it out after correct and that's ah. all up to the studio got know, it got it okay studio being amazon got it yeah you know what happens when there are strikes like this what shows like american gladiators come out <laughs> i just saw that on the espn uh, me too, me too. Yeah, oh, yeah. american gladiators it. coming back it when it came out originally it was the result of an actor strike so they're just looking ah. you know the networks were looking for things that they could I like that play. show. I love that show. The, the yeah. one day they, they, uh, yeah, it's insane. I love that show. I love yeah. the old, the old ones. Yeah, that's the, what the, I'm that, saying. Yeah, so like that's, the there's a ESPN 30 for 30 documentary out now. That's it's two parts. It's just about the original American gladiator original. And then the, the remake and it's pretty good, but I love that show, man. 
Me too. I would love I, to be I love on the, that like, show. The, 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 they would shoot baseballs, right? It was like the- Everything, yeah. yeah. It's fucking uh-huh. jousting. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so genius. It's like American it's, Ninja Warrior, Amer- yeah. but like- American with version. massive humans. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a fun show. I would love to do like, like to be a contestant on that show. <laughs> oh man. Cause I, and when I'm watching it, like some of the, 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 the participants are like, they're like built like me. Like, yo, you're going up against <laughs> these bodybuilders. Greek gods, yo. Um, uh, Sidetrack with you. So with what you were saying with how, how writers can write off um, a character and stuff. Your, your, and your wife does, she's a writer as well. She's a writer. Yeah. That's a pretty heavy <clears throat> occupation because you have to have, I feel like writers have to have the gnarliest imaginations and like the, their depth of creativity mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and everything, mm-hmm. you know, like what, what is that? I don't know when you call it occupation, but what is that art like for your wife? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, man, it, it really helps that the fact that like I married somebody who at the time she wasn't, um, in the entertainment industry, but I think, uh, you know, through our years together, she's herself grown a love and respect for, you know, just the, the arts. Mm. Um, my wife's creative process is so interesting. She will be talking to me and then she'll be like, pen, I need a pen. She's like, she has that's an idea cool. and she just constantly is pulling from, from real life inspiration. Uh, yeah. That's um, awesome. Which Did I think she read a lot. Yeah. Oh gotcha. yeah. Huge bookworm. Yeah, yeah. When she was a kid, she yeah. used to like compete in like the, uh, scholastics book fair, like yeah. just, uh, buy, uh, uh, write her own books and sell them and mm. stuff. So she's been doing this since she was a kid. Yeah. You need to get her this thing called remarkable. What's that? It's like this. I showed you the ad. Remember, I've been getting all the no, but what she because it, it's like an electronic. <laughs> no, he's, he's right though. No, it's like an electronic, um, electronic uh, notepad. Yeah, but it like does everything. But it's not like a tablet. It's like a Kindle on steroids. Oh, yeah. I yeah, love yeah. the Kindle. Yeah, I mean, I got into Kindle because of you. Yeah, <laughs> so get out of here. <laughs> yeah, damn. So your guys' friendships really been developing. Over years, huh? <laughs> Dude, you know what's funny, yeah. man? It, it's it's crazy how how we met. Yeah. I I found you guys on. My mom's is funny. My mom subscribed me to the GQ magazine years ago, and I to the physical magazine. To the physical magazine. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, I, lo- I love magazines, man. That's great too, that she man. did that. Good for mom. Man. Yeah. yeah, right behind you, right there. Yeah, it's that magazine right there. Uh huh. It go. is. You're yeah. right, yeah. J Cole. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I never looked through them ever. And then one day I was like, ah, you know, let me, let me read the articles because every now and then they have like a, an actor or something in the front, and they have like a whole spread on them. And I came across I forgot what it, it was. A tie dye. Yeah, the tie dye. It was the no pink. Way. It's a cotton candy tie dye. Yeah, out of here. Yeah, and I reached out to Standard Issue, you guys, and I just direct you, message. Yeah, yeah, yeah DM, and I think you responded. Yeah, and just started, yeah, from there, just started talking, and there was a lapse in time where we didn't talk again. Yeah, and then I reached out to you back again when that's I was right. in Vancouver. That's right. Yeah, and just it's from crazy. there, it just kept. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. just just shooting the shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Just just talking about like it's like normal things that like yeah. I don't really get to talk with people nowadays because. Yeah. <clears throat> It seems like nowadays- Did you have a name and a face behind who you were talking to at that no, point? No, <laughs> no, no. Because I'll be not. messaging brands or stuff and be like, this could be fucking anybody on yeah. this side. Like, yeah. You know, like, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Damn. I think it wasn't until I met you in person that I was like, oh. Yeah. Damn. Oh, it's like, oh, this, this guy's Asian. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, crazy, man. <laughs> Social media. Like yeah. you could just meet people from different yeah. walks of life and yeah. you guys connect on something, mm-hmm. you know, which we, which yeah. we did. And- uh here we are, man. Yeah. It's, life is life is funny. That's as as twisted and as crazy as the world of social media is. It's like it's a blessing. Those, are the, those are the great things. Yes, mm-hmm. like the connectivity to to different people that you might not have ever had. I, I love the as, as for kids and stuff. It's like as as bad as it on one hand, it's such an amazing resource that mm-hmm. like you know a lot of these layers that you had to go through and whatever it is, whether it's acting or anything, to getting whatever it is that you want to get out, you can get it out, you know? And I don't know. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, especially for, for kids, like learning how to manage their time on social media, you know, cause like you said, there are positive things about it, but like too much of it. Oh, hell like yeah. Too much yeah, of yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It's no good for you. Yeah. My daughter uses too much mm-hmm. internet right now. I feel you. Yeah. Same with my kid. Yeah. Um, how old? She's 12. Same age. Yeah. <clears throat> that's the age, man. Yeah. yeah. We have, we put a, we put a time limit now oh, no and way. then she started and then she figured out the password mm-hmm. and then she'll start using it. And then my wife's like, yeah, how did you, how are you still playing this? Didn't you, yeah, weren't you nah, on this yeah. thing for like two hours already? She's like, nah, yeah. I don't know. The time yeah. is just here. 
Yeah, I've kids seen my smart, daughter man. make videos that like have literally been these shorts that I at 41 years old would think I'd be hiring and paying somebody mm-hmm. to do like, it's, it's incredible. You yep. know? Mm-hmm. You know, like I'll find this shit on my phone and stuff. And I'll be like, how did you do, who put those graphics in? Who made the motions? Like mm. it's nuts, Ty. I'm like, you know, uh, like tell her like, this might be, you know, think about production as a whole. Like you could be doing shooting this. stuff uh-huh. and then, and then you could go in the editing bay and like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's pretty interesting. It is very regard, interesting. Yep. You know, so it's a powerful tool, man. Same yeah. with like AI and stuff like that. I it's know. powerful stuff. And it could be yeah. used, you know, for like productivity reasons, but then at the same time, like Well, you know, this whole podcast is AI, right? This is all AI right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we even oh, we're not even here? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's like we we talk Jared and I talk about this, like you know, there will be days, maybe if we don't have a release for a week. And we'll see the pattern it has within our, our web shop. And then when we put something out, the effect it'll have then have on other things in our web shop that have nothing to do with that. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, it's weird. It, de- it definitely is like, it's pretty fucked. You know? yeah. It'll make you think. And it'll, it'll, yeah. It makes you yeah. think a lot. You're yeah. just like scratching your head all yeah. the time. Yep. Yeah. Cause you're like, <clears throat> how, how, how does this correlate? This post correlate <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. 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 But it's, it's like a spider web. It yeah. just branches out. Yes. And you have no idea. Yep. So were you shooting packages up to, to Vancouver? I think, um, you were you first here when I first, and I think, I think you sent me some stuff in Vancouver. In Vancouver. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. Then, Basically all I wore in Vancouver was standard issue. <laughs> and I'm sure it's useful. It's cold. Oh yeah. 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 I, I had like the sweatsuits and stuff and yeah, it's freezing out there. Yeah. Always yeah. wearing your Knicks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to retire it for a bit. Cause you know, they got. Which one? The cardigan. The yeah, cardigan. The cardigan. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the matching yeah. ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did the back say on it? Forever. Forever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Where does that come from? The forever, I have no. That's New a, York forever. Or? Yeah, I'm not that. sure where the, the the gentleman had designed it for. There were yeah. diff, different franchises, different terms, but I think so. Yeah, C Red was the Bulls. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, you guys yeah. had different different things in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Laker, that's dope. Yeah. Laker was Lake Show, right? Lake Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that the Knicks are are competitive again, man. Too, the NBA man. is a much better place with a good Knicks team. It's it's, you know? it's one of the biggest cities in the states, bro. Like you have to have a yeah. competitive team. Right. I want to go to a game in Madison Square Garden. I I've do. been to one. Really. And I, it was when Mello was in the Trailblazers. Oh, damn. And my wife and I were damn. there and it was, I was like nostalgic, man. It was, I was like, damn. Yeah. And uh, that's what he played for the Trailblazers after he played for New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Damn. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 The game looked great though, man. It's like, you got Spike Lee. I mean, you have like all our favorite rappers, Fat Joe, whomever, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. courtside, P. Davidson. It looks like <laughs> it's a vibe. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, NBA is definitely way better. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's funny because like I I love to go watch basketball live, baseball I love to watch on TV, and then football same TV. Yeah. Oh, okay. Football is too big, yo. There's it's too huge. much going on. There's so much energy and excitement mm-hmm. in a football stadium that you're like, <clears throat> it's it's. I mean, maybe it's just a super fan of me, but it's like it's it's a definitely a come down in Philly. No, for sure. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere yeah. Anywhere, here, wherever. A football, because Philly's crazy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Philly, they take their crazy, sports, dude. yeah. But 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 football is the gnarliest sport, and the fact that the fan bases only get such a but small. You get you basically get eight eight to nine home games of a year. So you have to pack all of that energy excitement into eight, eight games days, you know, mm-hmm. and they're just like, ah, like from the, how, how long yeah. is the season? Football season? 17 games, right? 17 games. Yeah. Some from September to basically de- December. If or oh, uh, January, only, if you're making the post. Correct. Yeah. So, so it's only like it's short, yeah, very short. It's yeah. one season. You get a buy and the, that two weeks for the buy feels like two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But, but football, I mean, not football. I think the funnest, the funnest energy in a sports arena is at a basketball game. Yeah. Uh, right. But this is constantly, yeah, con- I like basketball games. Yeah, yeah. It's short. I enjoyed baseball a lot. I, as an old man now, I love baseball games. Yo. I, I can't get into golf though. Golf Hell is still no, something yeah, that I'm yeah. like, maybe when I'm like, <laughs> Fuck seven, yo, we got to go to the other ones. It's to, to fun, a golf. Yeah. Event? It's fun. Cause I suck at golf, but it's fun when you go with a group of your friends. Oh, and you're playing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you're just playing. Mm. Yeah. Watching. I don't like, that's what I meant. Yeah. Snooze it wasn't button, like man. masters. It's like super like happening this year. Everyone's like, yeah, it's pop. I mean, golf is popping. Yeah. You know, but, but every brand I mean, was at the masters this year. Yeah. <laughs> like every brand and their mom. Yeah. Huh. It's, nah, I'm going to go off, go off, yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. 
I would love to go to a UFC event live. I, mean, I feel like the energy at those things, it must be off the charts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My wife got invited to when Ronda Rousey fought at the, it was a stable center at that point. And I think it was the, was it the Misha Tate one? Or no, 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 I'm sorry. It was, it was the one where she got beat actually. Holly, Holly, Holly Holmes. Holmes versus Holly Holm. Yeah. And they are sitting right Yo. behind Conor McGregor. Like they were like row two. And she invited me and I was like, her dad is like the most diehard UFC mm. fan. I was like, dude, you got to take your dad as much as I want. Good on you, man. As yeah. much as I want to go, like for one, this guy will hate me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like a new fan. Yeah. I don't even know all the, all the fighters. But, yeah. But she said, you can literally hear, like you hear the punches just so mm. like loud and in your face. She's like, it was, it's intense. Dude, you get, I, when I watch UFC, even on TV, I'm like this, I'm like clenching. Yeah. I'm always clenching my hand because I'm just like, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's tough not to. Yeah. It's hard not to. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. She said they had, you know, like, um, you know, these arenas have like these little private bar situations and restaurants. And so she said, so she said after that specific UFC, like a handful of the fighters were kicking it in there and they were still beefing in the fucking spot. Like really? they were like, and this was guys that weren't even on the card were beefing with each other from mm. different weight classes. And uh, stuff. She said it was like pretty, she's like, I couldn't tell if it was, I mean, it looked pretty real, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Sold, but yeah. You remember when, uh, is it Habib or Khabib? Khabib, yeah. Khabib, Khabib. Yeah. He like jumped over the fence. Oh yeah. 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 After oh, yeah. the McGregor fight. Yeah. yeah. Shit's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. And he socked, uh, it was, it was McGregor's training partner at that time, Dylan, Dylan something. He's like the ultimate UFC inter Instagram troll. Oh, oh every yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Dylan Francis is that DJ. Dylan, Dylan something, yeah. I know, I know who you're talking he about. Comments on every, he comments on every, he comments on every single post, yo. Uh, <laughs> but that was gnarly to jump the thing and then fight. Oh, yeah. I mean, and they got in the fight in uh the in New York where he, where he threw like the, the rolling chair. rack or something. He threw a chair or that something. I felt like yeah, something yeah, in like WWE. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you watch the McGregor doc McGregor documentary yet on no, Netflix? No, I haven't. It's pretty interesting. I mean, it's interesting in the fact that it's like a four part thing. The whole thing he's losing. He's not won a single fight in the course of this documentary, which is over the span of I want to say six or seven years. But just mm. seeing, I think you get to see a different side of him. Uh -huh. I was never a big McGregor fan. This actually like. You're like, damn. I mean, he's, at the end, he's still a human being. Right. And he talks about more so his, him, the build up in his career and getting there and you see his family and everything mm -hmm. and you see mm -hmm. all the travel. It's, it's pretty, it's actually pretty good, man. So check it out. Uh, it's crazy, man. Like the toll that being an athlete or just any profession that takes you away from your family, even if they're flying with you from, from country to country, it's like, it's just tough because it requires so much of your attention mm -hmm. and like, you know, a spouse or even your kids, like they get put on the back burner for a while. Oh like, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. if you want to be great, you know, yep. Yep. but you, to, to be with somebody who understands that and like, is still there with you, you know, that's, yeah. I'm that's anything, man, whatever it is that you're, that you love and you're, I'm sure there are times when you're focused on something and, and your wife's like, damn, like when's it going to be our time or for the, you know? for the past year, man, <laughs> that's why I'm taking my wife to Italy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. It's like for the past year I've just been and then, like I said, I understand that these opportunities don't come often, which is why I'm just like yeah. taking it. But I also understand that like, you know, she's been there, yeah. you know, just waiting for me mm -hmm. and uh, graciously. So like I have to That's attend awesome. to that, you know, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely days where my lady's like, yo, you got to put your phone down. Like you get home, you, you beeline the house, you're, you're right on your computer and it's like, oh, you're there, but you're not there. Mm -hmm. it's like, I you're gotta, physically there, but yeah. you're not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Man. My whole, my thing is like, I've, I've seen those dark places before and like, I feel fortunate. I've been able to weather those places <clears throat> career wise, personally, everything. And like the, f I guess the fear of going back to that place mm. is like, is what in a point part drives me to like keep working harder, but it's not necessarily always the healthiest man. That's where I'm at right so, now, man. It's like, I know what it's like to not have work. So now that I have it, I'm like, I'm going to make the most of this. Yeah. And what's more and what's more. And I, you know, as like a species, you know, we're always concerned, like what's next. Right. Um, or some of us who have that, like that, that drive and determination, but it becomes obsessive right now. And that's what I'm kind of trying to find the balance. So yeah. It's funny you say that. Yeah. yeah. He's like that too. This yeah. guy's first person here, last person. I leave, know, you know, I'm constantly. texting him at like 8 PM. He's like, I'm going to He's like, I'm just now leaving the office. Yeah. 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 I'm sure Kayla's like Jared. 
Oh yeah. Take a chill I, pill, but nah, she's like, oh, he's doing his shit again. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what you want to. She's lose. very you supportive. Know. That's yeah. good, man. She's very supportive and doesn't like interfere in that. And she's very responsible with like, hey, you do that, and I'll do this. Mm. So that's awesome. Yeah, because yeah. she's taking care of your babies, yeah. man, all day, yeah. Yeah. all day. That's yeah. hard, dude. I'd rather I'd rather be here than be at home taking care of my dude on the weekend. And when I have to watch my kids, I'm just like. I need a cigarette. <laughs> You're like, I I'm like understand. Taylor, watch the kids for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I have to we'll go outside. That's yeah. the beauty of having a bigger sibling. <laughs> yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. Now it is demanding though, man. But yeah. I then need this, these things that we work in. It's like, it's unfortunate, like feast or famine. You yeah, know, from it is. Tyler to myself, to especially you, here. It's like, you know, there's always whereas, somebody else coming. Who's going to take your spot. You know, yeah, it's yeah. A, you heard in sports all the time. It's the same thing in the real world. You know? Yeah. Yep. There's always somebody who's hungry or who's right. So at, at the end of the day, we do it right to provide for our family. Mm, of that's, course. That's the reason. But sometimes we, we forget like uh, to give them attention to in the process, mm -hmm. or at least I do. Yeah. So I definitely find myself at points, like I'll, I'll see certain people doing certain occupations and I'll be like, damn, you know, like it's hard not to be like, it must be nice to like be able to clock in and clock out. And when you clock out, you're not taking this shit home with you, you mm -hmm. know, but you know, at the same time, you know, I don't, you know, it's all where who's happy at doing what, what right they're now, doing. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. So. No, but I get it. But like, like being able to just like, I don't have to think about that until yeah, I yeah. clock back in tomorrow yeah. where it's like other professions like you guys. And I know myself, I do the same thing where it's like, I'm just, it's hard not to, yeah, yeah. you're either prepping for the next day or another meeting and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess whatever you gotta do to yeah. keep the lights on and keep food on the fucking table. For yeah. sure. That's it, brother. So, but shit. Well, man, I know you have a busy schedule, Brandon. Thank you so much for thank you so much for helping coming, us with the brand. Thank you so much for giving. This is the hardest thing with this with us doing the podcast, man. Is I feel damn near I feel selfish asking people to carve time out of their days mm. to come and spend time talking. So and it, it really means a lot to us. So yeah, thank you with everything you got going on and your family for coming here and, and giving us some time on this awesome. June 9th, 2013, right? 2013. What year, is it? what year did I say in the beginning? Uh, 2013. 2013. 2012 right. or 2013? Dude, Something like that. I As of late, I've been fucking years <laughs> up so bad. Like I said, I think I said 2001 a couple of days ago to my lady. Yeah, I don't know what, and my years are off, man. So. Uh, Ever since I like left you school, know, you know, like these like write on like the yeah, whiteboard yeah. Yeah. what day it was. Yeah. And the minute I left school or graduated, it was just uh -huh. like, That's what it. day is it? What yeah, day yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's what man. the cell phones are for. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Man. You're right. But I'm happy to be here, guys. You know, you, Thank guys, you, so you much. guys are two good individuals and, you know, I wish you guys nothing but the best in your field. And I'm happy to to, to be here today. Thank you. Know, you guys and are, and thank honestly, you for always supporting with, us with, too. With your production work, we would love to to work with you. And I would love uh, to find a space where we can work. Out. Absolutely. Yeah. Got some Heck stuff. Yeah. So it's awesome what you're doing, what your guys mission with your production company is too. It's like, you know, just bringing light to people that you care about and communities you care about. Mm-hmm. That's that's special, yo. So that's it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for coming, bro. I appreciate right. you guys. Cool. All right. Have a great day. You too, brother. Thank, Thank you. you.